it sort of creates a lightness to that dark facade and there's sort of some texture to it. It allows the light to come in from the inside and allows a little bit of light and shade and the light to hit it differently. Our office is in Albert Park, so this context is pretty familiar to us. This particular site is in a commercial precinct. There's a pub on the corner and a, and a few shops either side. But with the neighbourhood residential to the rear, neighbourhood residential across the road. The other thing with this site, and most of Albert Park, it's in a heritage context. This is interesting, this site, in a, from a commercial development, in that this was very purpose-built for a client to be his permanent base, right in the heart of Albert Park. The program and what we needed on each floor was very specific, down to the people and what rooms they had to be in. But aspirationally, it wanted to be a building, a showcase for him, a place to bring clients for business, but also to entertain and to be proud of. This project had a quite a tricky planning process. We had the heritage to deal with. We had the fact that we're in neighbourhood residential and so surrounded by residents on all sides. The fact that it's, you know, even though it's commercial and there's no height limit, you've got limitations based on your context and the people around you. We did actually go through planning twice. Uh, initially, we went in with four storeys and then pulled it back to three by breaching the heritage setbacks at the front in consultation with council. The design concept for this building was sort of have as a clean aesthetic, being aware that we were building quite a large building for this context. You know, lots of single storey, double storey, we're building a three storey building in that context. We wanted it partly with the colour and the form just to be recessive to the heritage. There are sort of two material aesthetics. There's a black steel aesthetic to the front and then there's a brick facade to the back. The brick references the residential context. Essentially the layout of this building, there's three main zones. There's the car park, there's the commercial, and then there's the apartment. The commercial is zoned so you've got your public interface on Victoria Avenue. Above that, facing Vic Avenue, you've got the executive wings. And then at the back, you've got your workspace, which is where most of the staff sit. The way the building works, most of the services are towards the core of the building because we're basically boundary to boundary. The light's at the front and the back and we've got a couple of light courts. The other part of the building is the apartment, which is on the top level. We've got a terrace at the front, given to us by the heritage setbacks. So we've got a large terrace, the living room. The centre of the apartment is the services, so kitchen, laundry, bathrooms. We've got a couple of bedrooms around a light court and then the master bedroom is at the back, looking over the residential context. The site is 160 square metres. We've got around about 200 square metres of commercial, 100 square metres in the apartment, and each of the terraces are about 30 square metres each. There are two key materials for this project. One facing Victoria Avenue is expanded mesh. It sort of creates a lightness to that dark facade and there's sort of some texture to it. It allows the light to come in from the inside and allows a little bit of light and shade and the light to hit it differently than say just straight black facade. The other material is the masonry on the east facade which is essentially a three-story sheer wall of dark grey bricks and they sort of reference the the brick material of the area though not red. I mean we, we didn't want to do something literal. It was more taking more of a domestic material and adding it to that facade. For the interiors of this building and also the external palette, we worked with Carly D'Alessandro of Huntress Design. Her sort of philosophy on materials is that sort of the layer of texture and play on light sort of added depth to the spaces. She uses a lot of wallpapers, so a lot of the references here are to sort of have it, to take the extension from the inside to the outside. So these lush green terraces with the wallpaper inside and it sort of extends both these spaces as one space. The other materials 
there's a lot of natural stone and we've carried that through all the way through the floors and all, all the way through the terraces. There is timber on this apartment level just to soften that, but essentially we've got that same granite running through the entire building, so commercial through to residential. We did sort of look at the metal trims internally, particularly in the apartment, and moving away from standard chrome materials. We've sort of got brass offset by quite dark, moody veined stones. It's bringing a darker finish into the space, adding sort of a layer of texture and colour and intrigue to the space. This project was sort of pre-pandemic, but it almost became a perfect model for what we're going through. South Melbourne to Western Kilda is like this inner city bubble that's its own world. People who live here like to work here and they don't leave. And so I think having a small scale, single residence and an office below, almost like a caretaker's residence in a way. That was sort of happening in this area long before the pandemic. And I think the pandemic has probably accentuated the need for it. And it's probably a model that now can sort of extend a little bit further from the city. People don't have to travel into the city.